Good evening. Welcome to a strangely warm and sunny week three in the Northeast. It's been a wild weekend, and we've had some unfortunate cancellations for the upcoming week, but we've also had some spot-on gameplay, and we'll get you ready to watch the week coming up ahead of us. Reporting for first updates now, I'm Kevin. I'm Ben. And I'm Dave. And we have Audrey here, but uh, they're having some audio issues. So, we have a giveaway tonight. Tyler, can you tell us more about that? Uh, yeah, actually, we're going to be giving away, uh, if you're here throughout the entire night, uh, Rev Robotics is doing a full takeover of giveaways this evening. Uh, so starting with, we got a whole bunch of stuff here, guys. Uh, so this is just going to be that super prepared night, guys. So much news going on right now uh, all around. So we have uh, from Rev Robotics, it's going to be a Ultra Planetary 550 motor plate. So you're going to get a bunch of stuff from Ultra Planetary uh, this evening, Neo 550s. Uh, as well too uh, so lots of neat stuff uh, we'll put a link in chat uh, if you're interested in checking out more uh, about all the cool stuff uh, that Reb has to give away so uh, if you're interested in winning we'll just have a keyword for you to type in a little bit later during the show and uh, type that in that'll be your chance to win all the cool stuff from uh, Reb Robotics this evening so good luck everybody and enjoy the Nor'easter region recap awesome right. thanks Tyler can you hear me now yes yes we can awesome with that, we'll head into our first recap. Kevin, how was the Waterbury Regional this weekend? Or district, sorry. The Waterbury wow. District event was the first chance for most Connecticut teams to play Infinite Recharge, and they came out to play. Right off the bat, 176 Aces High was dominating with quick, efficient trench cycles, and they ended up going 12-0 and to take the number one seed. They were dealt a strong hand of choices for the first overall pick. There were 7407, the Wired Boars, who are the only team at the event with a higher power cell score than 176, but their inconsistent climber was a bit of a liability. There was 8085, the Rookies, Mojo, who have one of my favorite names in FRC. <laughs> they have a very consistent hang, but they were a low goal only robot. They were very good at it. 3566, Gone Fission, was playing their second event, and they were an excellent robot with a good autonomous and a consistent hang. But sometimes they had matches where their feeder system would jam, and they also occupied the same role as 176. They were both trench cyclers. Then there was 177 Bobcat Robotics. They had a consistent hang, solid power cell output, and they filled a different niche. And they were the second seed, making them the best hand to go all in on. They picked up 999 for their third robot for the elimination rounds. <clears throat> the second seed was captained by 8085 Mojo, and they picked up 3566 Gone Fishing. Well, the third seed was 4557, the Full Metal Falcons. They had 1071, Team Max. And the fourth seed was 228, Gus, and 7407, the Wired Boars. They were also strong, especially since they managed to get a climb with shooting capability on the backside of the draft in 237, Black Magic. Wow. The higher seeds won out through quarterfinals. So one, two, and four were each putting in more than 20 balls on the high goals. <clears throat> Semi-finals pitted one versus four and two versus three. One versus four was especially a treat, as the four seed was actually outscoring the number one seed in Teleop. But in the end, 7407's Alliance only scored one climb, while the one seed ensured that they got two climbs up every time. Even after the one seed had to call in the backup robot um, in, ex in place of 999, team 4572, Barlow Robotics. And they played admirably, admirably in getting the one seed to the finals. Finals was one versus two. 176, 177, 999, and 4572 versus 8085, 3566, and 7760 Palm Tech. Palm Tech was an excellent pickup for that two seed as they didn't miss a single climb throughout the elimination rounds. And if they could get the triple climb that the one seed lacked, they could take the series. But in the end, the one seed triumphed, scoring more power cells and tying the climb so the two seeded Lions take it in two matches. 176 ended the event undefeated, 18-0. The District Engineering Inspiration Award went to 178, while the Chairman's Award went to 3654, the Tech Tigers. 8085 Mojo also earned the Rookie All-Star Award. So, Dave, what happened in Southeast Massachusetts? All right, going down to the beautiful town of Bridgewater, we go where things started heating up almost instantly. Teams including 88, 63, 29, 5,000, and 78 made their marks throughout the qualification matches, but it seemed that no one would be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the mighty Aluminum Falcons and their balanced climb. Slightly 
less aggressive than their name and drive motors, but still incredibly powerful. Team 2168 stole the show this weekend, going 11-1 and with 27 ranking points and over 100 more teleop points than the next ranked team. Team 6329 had an absolutely incredible showing, matching the Falcons' 28 ranking points with an incredible climb, but only drawing one, one loss, one additional loss. Moving into the playoffs, it was an interesting start with 2168 ranked one, picking up 88 as their first choice. Too many spectators surprise. 88 ended qualifications, ranked five with 20 qualifications points. It must have been, the Falcons must have been drawn to their incredible pivoting shooter and their incredibly consistent climb. On the way back up the bracket, they scooped their third climbing robot, Team 3958. The second seed alliance of 30, 63 29 would quickly tag 60 would quickly tag 78 as their first round pick and team 67 31 to round out their alliance. The limbs were mildly standard with only one rubber match and one upset the entire tournament. The first seeded alliance and second seed alliance cruise through making quick work of all of their opponents absolutely cruising into the finals where things were surely about to heat up. Finals one was off to an incredible start. Autos on both sides as the timers ticked down with the end of auto red held onto the lead 57 to 49. It was an offensive matchup with almost no effective defense being played on either side. 2168 running quick cycles in 78 quickly and 78 sticking to their front zone with 6329 quickly running cycles through their rendezvous zone. Red slowly started to pull away as time ticked off. The clock and we closed in the end game with 20 seconds left. Both teams scramble for the bar. All four robots reaching up, all four robots pulling down almost simultaneously. It seemed like an incredible feat. As four robots hung there, it became quiet in the building. You could have blue, could blue have pulled off the upset? The score was too close to tell, but alas, they didn't. The score flashed up at the board 202 to 155 with red taking the first one. As the robots rolled back into the field, the lovely Adam Saren reintroduced the teams and counted down the finals. Finals to start, Sir J James Lockman hyped the crowd up and the robots were off. Otto was a storm of power cells from both teams, but Blue sli slightly seeming off the mark, missing more than half of their shots. The final seconds of the auto click down and red sits in the lead, 67 to, to 43 points. Teams were off to the races. The Falcons were first to strike, setting their shots way high. In missing the mark, 78, having spent most of their time over the course of the event steadily improving their shot, were ho was honing it in, drilling shot after shot after shot. With just over a minute left, Red built a steady lead, but it didn't stop Blue from slowly tripping away. Team 6329 Bucksport was absolutely putting everything on the line, flying across the field. There was no concern over breaking that robot. They had to do what it takes. With 30 seconds left, the teams made their way back to the zones, blew down double balance and hang. They needed something crazy to happen. Thus, in the end, it was the same as finals one, four robots up and a balance, giving Red the match and the tournament, 183 to 151. A huge shout out to the number two alliance, team 6329, team 78, and team 6731 for an incredible limbs run. And congrats to teams 2168, the home team, team 88, and 3958 for taking home the banner. Finally, got to give a big shout out to Team 6201, the Highlanders, for taking home EI, and of course to Team 2168 for taking home Chairmans that they have been trying for years. Very well deserved win by them. <laughs> All right, what do you think we move down to Mount Olive, maybe? Wait, yeah. Mount Olive? Well, Mount Olive. Un unfortunately, Mount Olive wasn't able to happen this week. It actually. Um, it, what happened there was the volunteers had just about finished putting up the field when they were instructed that the event wasn't going to happen. So, unfortunately, they had to take it down, and some of the teams who'd come down like 125 and were already on the road had to head on back up. But, um, you, you know, it, it's... The, they did what they can, and FMA is doing what they can to reschedule all the teams so that they can get events. Um, they're, they're doing their best to get it working. So on that topic, with our numerous cancellations this and postponements so far in FMA in New York and other places of the world, like we found out PNW, they're they're all getting postponed for the season. Um, how will this impact our season this year? Yes, I'm. I'm really hoping we still have our event this weekend at least. Like we've been preparing pairing for North Shore all season, and a cancellation would just be terrible. I'm really concerned about all the teams and organizations that are going to have to recoup all their money that they've already spent on hotels and flights 
And especially teams that were only signed up for one event and that event got canceled or postponed. Like, could a single event New York City team continue to exist if their sole event was canceled and they can't recoup their lost money? And then there's also the students who might have their senior year cut short or not have a senior year at all due to the outbreak. I mean, it's, it's better that the events not happen than the events contribute to further outbreaks and deaths. But it's a big blow to first teams, first students and organizations that support a program. Yeah, I I think it's a tough situation, right? Like you have you have this horrible uh, health scare that's happening, and it's it's definitely necessary to take the precautions uh, to make to ensure that these events aren't the cause of the continued spread of it. But I get a feel for everybody that's had their events canceled. Uh, I know I got a lot of friends up in New York that are that are struggling to just find an event to go to, and it's not just like okay, they can get into another event or another regional. It includes now they have a week to go back to their school board and be like, hey, we, we're in a pickle. Can we get it? And like a lot of the times the school boards, they need more more advanced notice. So it's it's really tough and it puts everybody in a tough situation. So I feel, I feel for them. And I'm also a little bit nervous because we're going to Canada. Uh, so I have to take 50, 50 people uh, in a bunch of vans to a different country and then hope we can get back in on, on the way back. Yeah, just speaking of New York, um, where New York's probably looking at getting only one regional this year, and that's going to be Finger Lakes Regional, hopefully, uh, this coming weekend. Uh, but uh, most of our events have been canceled this year, and those that haven't are in the New York City region and um, the Hudson Valley region, which are both uh, have outbreaks right now. So uh, most teams are just looking for their first play of the season. Like we've got teams like Shaker Robotics, like 3015 Ranger Robotics that are looking at um, maybe not even playing this season, which is kind of scary from them. Uh, from chat, we have a few comments. Um, GJ Reaper 274 says postpone the season with events continuing in the summer and champs in the fall. How do we like that? I'm so tired already. Just thinking about that. <laughs> I think it's I think like it's better than just not having the events, right? But then you're gonna think, how do you how how do you plan? Uh, it literally takes years to plan these championships, right? Yeah. To get the venue, to get all of this, all of the vendors set up. So unfortunately, I don't think that is a viable solution that's gonna be happening. As much as I wish it would would be, it would be then, interesting to see how they count these events that are gonna happen in the fall towards next year's champs yeah I, i'm not necessarily sure how they're going to do it yet i've been kind of mulling it over in my mind like the half season if you know what i mean it's uh, it's not a good situation yeah, I really like how FMA is handling it, though, where they said uh, only people who are registered with the team or registered as a volunteer um, could come in. And I think that's definitely better than canceling those events. Yeah, absolutely. Can, can so, I just chime in for a second? Why, <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah, and we, sorry, we is talked he on the mic? Show. Is he live on the mic? I got to ask, though. Like, So we've asked what FIRST should do. FIRST hasn't done anything yet. First has yeah. allowed local yeah. regions to do things, and then other than posting an out-of-date website, hasn't done jack. So first would be really appreciated if they could get the information from you at headquarters instead of all these different regions providing different ways of communicating with people and then end up getting their information through us or through a third party. It needs to come directly from you first. And I know you're working hard at it, but you should be requiring events to make their own decisions, but it should be funneled through you so official communications can actually take place to everybody in a consistent manner. It's absolutely ridiculous that we're seeing multiple, multiple, multiple different ways that teams are being uh, either emailed or responded, and then it's only the leads are being emailed and stuff like that. It needs to be a global way that completely reaches everybody or as many people as possible in first so they can be informed of what's going on. Yeah, it is so incredibly frustrating that they just haven't, like, you knew you had to have something like this, like, at least in your mind that it, there's the potential that it, but it seems like they just haven't ever put any thought that this could never be a possibility and there's no easy, yeah, it's, I'm glad you said that because it is, like, First kind of pays a PR firm about. $3 million a year. You're telling me oh, they can't get something so going right? Look at their financial records. It's right on there as, uh, as somebody that they pay $3 million a year as a PR firm. Yeah, that's insane. 
that's all of our registration money right there. Oh. All right. Wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Without without all of this week, our No Thieves Top 10 is exclusively New England teams. These are the teams voted on by you, voters from the Northeast, in the FRC Top 25 this week, filtered to only include teams from the Northeast. So our number one this week is Team 2168, Aluminum Falcons. Number two is 88. Three is 78. Four is 6329. Fifth is 176. Sixth is 4564. Seventh is 177. Eighth is 23. Ninth is 5000. And tenth is 172. You were all crazy. Why is 176 not at number one? They were undefeated <laughs> all weekend. If you watch that robot, that robot can keep up with those crazy robots down in Texas that are putting up insane numbers of points. That robot. I think 176 should be at the top of this list. And I think that they're only going to get better over the course of the season. So I just like, I can't even imagine where they're going to be at once they get to DCMP at champs. Yeah, absolutely. I'm just very happy to see 6329 on there. I loved watching them play this weekend. Uh, absolutely great robots to watch in finals against uh, 2168. A uh, bit sketchy to see uh, 23 on there, a uh, team that didn't <laughs> make eliminations, but uh, we're rolling with it, you know? Hmm. Was that the that? cannon robot, the air cannon? Oh, was it? I think that they shot balls via an air cannon. Okay, actually, had a, no, cool that, action. that deserves to be on it there. Had an active, <laughs> it legitimately had an active suspension. It looked like my my old Buick with blown out shocks driving down the road. It was incredible. That's funny. Even yeah. for them, they must have put forth a strong campaign, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, no no FMA teams, no U, New York teams with the, with the cancellations that we've had here. Unfortunate, you know, it is it is what it is, so... Um, you know, hopefully we'll see more next week. Yeah, seeing 23 on there, I mean, uh, without having 8085 Mojo, finalist alliance captain yeah. at uh, Waterbury, and 3566, who wasn't on the week one uh, top 20, top 10 either, and they were awesome. Like, they were in the finals. They hit, like, 20 balls in the high goal on their own in quarters. Like, I'm pretty yeah. surprised that... Uh... 125 wasn't on there. I know that they didn't compete, but I at least still <laughs> people to just put their number in there because that's. Are we about that, please don't. Yeah, please, yeah. We don't condone that, by the way. And you oh, can no. only vote Sorry. for teams that have competed in the current week. Uh, talking to you, that sushi shish kebab bots or whatever the crap your team yeah. name is. <laughs> All right. So we have got a giveaway coming at you. Tyler, can you hit us with that giveaway code? Yes, I can hit you with the giveaway code. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, just uh, real quick. Uh, so once again, uh, from our friends at uh, Rev Robotics, uh, we are giving away, uh, for this show, we're doing a whole bunch throughout the whole time, uh, but this is going to be the Ultra Planetary 550 Motor Plate. Uh, so we'll make it easy enough. Motor Plate is going to be the uh, keyword, two words, Motor Plate. Uh, so good luck on that. Subscribers get five times luck. Go ahead and join Foundation, help fund stay loud, live, and independent. Motor Plate is the keyword. Who's ever yeah. logged in on my account at our shop? Can they type in motor? Oh, no, I can't win. Never mind. Don't do that. <laughs> All right. You can't win. Right. Your teammates can. Yeah, but they're logged in on my account, and I keep seeing comments, so hopefully they're <laughs> not good. All right, moving right along. Let's take a look at our, our events next week. Audrey, you want to take it away? Absolutely, Dave. We're starting off in the far west corner of our region today at the Finger Lakes Regional, held at RIT in New York. There's going to be a very large top tier at this event, and we may even see it get bigger as teams pull their registration from canceled events in hopes to compete before champs. Some teams are coming in with competition experience already, though, and that previous experience could really put them ahead in this mostly inexperienced field. Team 340, Greater Rochester Robotics, is coming in hot off a great run at Miami Valley, where they captained the second seed to a regional victory. Also to watch, Team 1559, a tall robot with a great up-against-the-wall shot who played on the fifth seed at Miami Valley. We also saw the debut of 1507, the Warlocks, who seeded a promising 12th but seemed to be having some drive issues that prevented them from getting locked in for quals. And Team 1511, Rolling Thunder, who took home the Chairman's Award. Other teams to watch, first and foremost, is Team 3015, Ranger Robotics. 
They're always just out of the range of being well-known outside their region, but 3015 debuted their reveal this year, and boy, howdy, do they look smooth. They were last year's regional champion at Finger Lakes, and they're looking to do it again. Seems like 340 and 3015 always find their way into the finals of FLR, but never together. Maybe this is the year for them, unless, of course, New York's traditionally huge mid-tier has anything to say about that. Starting off with the perennial finalist team, Team 5254 Hype. They've got a short robot with a five ball auto that's looking for their team's first blue banner. Not to be <laughs> underestimated for the fourth year in a row. <laughs> We've also got Team 120, Cleveland's team. It's coming over from Cleveland to prove that, yes, teams from Cleveland do win sometimes. We've also got teams coming in from downstate. Team 870 Rice, last year's number one seed in Victor, and Team 3171 Hurricanes. And then more Rochester teams as well. I've hyped them up this season, but Team 1551 is really poised for a breakout this year. They were the second seed captain at last year's FLR, and they've got a short robot with a mid and long range shot this year. Trying to prove that it's not quite a long shot for them to make it this year. We've also got 1126, who we talked to at Rochester Rally. And then we've also got 2716, who's a rookie this year, but seems to be an offshoot of Ranger. So we'll be watching their career with great interest. And so that's all the, oh, wait, that's not all the teams. There's going to be more teams popping up on this list all week because of Tech Valley and New Central New York being canceled. Team 2791, Shaker Robotics, is coming in from uh, Tech Valley region. We've got 1156, Brazilian Powerhouse, Under Control, and 1860 Alphabots. And they're coming into Finger Lakes uh, just as well now. The event was already crazy. And with these additions, they bring 16 blue banners to the competition. These are all incredible top tier teams. And they're bringing their best and maybe only game to FLR this year. How is North Shore going to be going, Kevin? So North Shore, I'm going to the, my first ever North Shore District event in Reading, Massachusetts. This is many of the team's first events of the season. The only big name team attending is Team 125, the Neutrons, who were scheduled to play at Mount Olive last weekend, but will instead be debuting at North Shore. The other favorites to mention are 1153 and Team 95, the Grasshoppers, who were arguably the best shooter in a stacked Granite State District a few weeks ago. They've been working on a few subtle improvements to their intake and such that you can check out in their build thread on Chief Delphi. 1153 made the finals at both their official Week 0 and at Northern Connecticut in Week 1. They're a solid short robot with a trench shot, and they're sure to be on one of the top couple seeds. Notable debuts include their partner from Week 0 on their finalist alliance, Team 5962, Team 5813, Morpheus, who had a good-looking spin dexer at Week 0 that they're sure to get the kinks worked out of, as well as some New Hampshire mainstays like 58, the Riot Crew, 509, the Red Storm, 238, the Crusaders, and last year's Curie Division winners, 1073. The team I've been working with, 3467, the Windham Windup, is also debuting after an okay week zero. We've developed a solid against the wall shot and a climber since then. Other teams not to underestimate are 1058 and 4761, both of whom have been working on issues they encountered at Granite State. I'm really looking forward to this event. Ben, you want to tell us about Robbinsville? Yeah, so we're running out of time, so I'm just going to list off the team numbers um, that I think you should look at for for highlighting here, the teams that look like they might make a strong run at this. So we got 2590, uh, 3314, 1807, 1089, 484. They've all played and had strong showings already. We've got some notable debuts, 11, 56, 225, 747, 5401, um, of note with them, they took home three events last year as the second pick. So uh, we'll see if they do something similar this year. <laughs> um, on Springside Chestnut Hill, the other FMA event, um, we've got some uh, a bunch of teams that have also had strong showings already at events: 316, 103, 1640, 708, 1218, 1403. Lots of uh, lots of talent here that's had a couple great events so far. Two notable debuts at Springside Chestnut Hill. 4342, uh, who revealed here on premiere night, and 834 as well. So um, expect very competitive events from both of these. FMA always has a very wide mid-tier. All right. So let's see who won the Motor Plate giveaway before we finish up here. Yep, Motor Plate giveaway winner is going to be Reese7457. Congratulations. A subscriber, lots of redeem modes in chat. Make sure you hit me up on Twitch or on Discord. Congratulations. All right, cool. In closing, here's your weekly reminder to vote for Top 25. It's opening on Sunday. I'm looking at you guys. You got to vote. 
Uh, you guys need more rep for your region. Uh, you can start submitting Twitch and short clips to fun Discord to make it on Clips of the Week, and those will be due Monday at 6 p.m. Eastern. So that'll be all we have for you tonight from Northeast. Thanks to, thanks for hanging out with us. Fun is once again asking for your help to stay loud, live, and independent. So please consider giving us a little bit of your support as a treat. You can join Fun Nation with a subscription or bits on Twitch, becoming a Patreon at patreon.com backslash first updates now. Or really just letting people know that this is the place to be to get that fun information for you and your team. Check us out on Discord, Facebook, Insta, Twitter, and even here live on Twitch and our videos on YouTube. On behalf of myself, Ben, Kevin, Dave, and our producer, Tyler, I would like to thank you for tuning in. And thank you to all our mods in chat. Our next show is going to be this sweet tea recap. And we'll talk to you next week on the Nor'easter Region Recap. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. You can also directly help support fun by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now or by subscribing at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and tier two plus subscribers on Twitch keeping fun loud, live, and independent.